Pac-Man Pacquiao. Throughout history, boxing has provided a haven for the downtrodden. Beyond a means of entertainment, the sport fosters discipline, concentration, and self-determination, disengaging the fighter from the sins of the streets. In the essence of boxing lies opportunity, opportunity to face tough times with resilience, to improve one's quality of life, and to chase one's dreams with self-confidence. Boxing requires sacrifice, but for Pacquiao, it was survival. Not a god, but worshiped by millions, Pacquiao has risen from the depths of poverty to stand as a potential leader of his people. Though not shy from controversy, Pacquiao arose as a symbol for the powerless. Seeing the desperation of our people uh, made me realize everything that I need to, because uh, nobody will fight for them. Uh, sincerely, wholeheartedly, and that's Manny Pacquiao. This is the remarkable journey of one of boxing's most unstoppable forces. This is the story of Manny the Pac-Man Pacquiao. February 2007. Pacquiao sends shockwaves through the boxing and political worlds, announcing his campaign to run for a seat in the Philippine House of Representatives. Local officials of the city of General Santos saw an opportunity to bridge their interests with those in the Philippine government. Political persuasion pushed Manny to run, but he ultimately lost to the incumbent representative from the Nationalist People's Coalition, who stated, more than anything, people weren't prepared to lose him as their boxing icon. But Manny the Pac-Man Pacquiao, as he's shown throughout his career, doesn't back down when faced with a fight. For Manny, the battle to affect change in the community he fought so hard to survive in would be prolonged and problematic. The fight that meant more to him now than entering the ring was to create jobs, educate, and provide medicine for the poorest in Filipino society. Just as he had portrayed in his ring appearances, when the pain hit, Manny hit back harder. Kibawe Bukidnon, the Philippines. Amidst the rolling hills, mountain peaks, and dense landscape in southern Philippines lies the municipality called Kibawe, where the quality of life is far from prosperous. December 17, 1978. Just over a week before Christmas, Emmanuel de Pedrin Pacquiao Sr. began his ascent to the peak of the boxing world. Born into a family struggling to make ends meet, Manny's start to life was far from trouble-free, eating as little as one meal a day before using the streets as his pillow. Poverty-stricken, his father once had to cook the family dog to feed the starving family though not done intentionally, as the dog had had a moment of misfortune. The plight of poverty pushed Manny to secure a way out for his family. His challenging start, no doubt, provided the thick skin and toughness necessary to rise through the ranks. Before long, 
Pacquiao's fists are fundamental to his survival on the streets of General Santos, where his parents decide to raise him. Boxing became the key to his family's survival. February 11, 1990, Tokyo, Japan. At just 12 years old, one particular heavyweight clash motivated Manny's meteoric mount to arguably the greatest pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the sport's history, Tyson versus Buster Douglas. The spectacle of one of the world's most significant upsets in sporting history symbolized the redeeming qualities of boxing, especially for those who faced no way out in their own fight for survival. The fight had a profound effect on an impressionable young Manny. Overcoming 42 to 1 odds and a rise from the canvas in round 8, Douglas made history. After a year of training in a makeshift home gym with his uncle, he begins to make a name for himself in the local circuit of the southern Philippines. At this time, while attending sixth grade, Pacquiao's parents separated after his mother discovered that her husband was involved in an extramarital affair. Looking for a way to support his family, the fighter, forced to use his fists to survive, embarked on a rags-to-riches journey. Regarded as one of the top junior boxers in the country's southern provinces, but with little support, a malnourished Manny sneaked onto a ferry bound for the capital in search of a better life. The city of Manila, the capital of the Philippines, Working in construction while continuing to live on the streets hardened his resolve. He endured hunger to send what little he had earned back to his mother. But it wasn't long until his admission into the Philippine National Amateur Boxing Team. Providing a route off the streets he'd lived on for so long and into housing supplied by the government. Lying about his age, and with an amateur record of reportedly 60 wins and four losses, Manny applied to become a professional at 16. Standing at four foot 11 inches and weighing just 98 pounds, the young boxer admitted that in order to make the 105 pound light flyweight limit, he had to put weights in his pockets. After taking 11 victories from 11 bouts in a dominant display throughout the division, Manny raised his weight to 113 pounds and entered the flyweight division. Undefeated but disadvantaged due to wearing heavier gloves than his opponent because of a missed weight limit, Manny took to the canvas, squaring up against Torre Campo. Torre Campo has carried the fight to Pacquiao. Oh! Pacquiao! He's out! He's out! It's over! Oh my gosh! It's One over! Punch. Manny it's Pacquiao over. cannot get up! The discipline displayed in previous fights faded. Complacency, driven by success and the trappings of money, namely gambling and alcohol, sent the mentally unprepared boxer tumbling. Manny suffered his first defeat in 12 ring visits. The setback proved to be a defining moment in his career. Setting his failure aside, the explosive fighter administered KO after KO, knocking out 11 of his 12 next opponents undefeated. Earning the Oriental and Pacific Boxing Federation's flyweight title in the process. After just three years at a professional level, he was now a world champion triumphing at his first championship conquest was the first stepping stone to the more lucrative purses and a more secure life for his family. <laughs> Suffering only his second defeat, he relinquished his title to Singh Surat in September 1999, having retained it five months prior. <laughs>
but ventured towards the end of the millennium with a new challenge on the horizon, the WBC International Super Bantamweight title. Manny put the weight on and laced up his gloves, skipping both the super flyweight and bantamweight divisions. Manny Pacquiao is fighting for the first time in a higher weight category. A day after his 21st birthday, Pacquiao looked to bounce back from his title defeat with a victory over Jamili. Another loss would be an almost insurmountable setback in reaching the prodigious purses. In trademark style, Pacquiao came out swinging, diminishing the reach of Jamili. One, two, three knockdowns in the second signaled the end of Jamili's career. But for Pacquiao, his was in its infancy. The knockout in round two laid the foundations for his opportunity of fighting overseas, retaining the WBC super bantamweight title for the next five bouts, catapulted his brand into recognition. One primary key to his success is head trainer Freddie Roach. In 1995, following an early retirement as a fighter and assistant to legendary trainer Eddie Futch, Freddie set up his own boxing club, the Wildcard Boxing Club in Hollywood. Wanting an American coach for his Western debut, Bob Aurum gave him Roach's address, and the rest is boxing history. June 23rd, 2001, Las Vegas, Nevada. Stepping into Enrique Sanchez's shoes after only two weeks' notice and 34 fights throughout Asia, Manny finally had his chance to dance in the spotlights of Vegas, a substitution most boxers wouldn't risk. Ledwaba, the IBF super bantamweight champion, stood in his way. Unknown to the broadcaster HBO and the commentators, no one was expecting an upset. Taking to the canvas in his iconic highlighted trim, Pacquiao delivered a box office performance, flooring the champion three times before sending him to the mat for good in a round six technical knockout. Overcoming the longer reach with his unmatched speed and movement to win his second major boxing world title, this time in a different class. Takes him apart with power shots. At the pinnacle of his career so far, the bout earned the rags to riches boxer $40,000, an amount he could only dream of back home in Manila. Under the guidance of Freddie Roach, Manny went on to defend his title four times in the next two years, cementing his place in the upper echelons of the sport. At just 25 years old, Manny was far from finished. In 2005, a super featherweight bout billed as coming with everything against Morales meant Manny had to move further up the weights. The vacant WBC International and IBA Super Featherweight titles are at stake. After failing to defeat Barrera, Morales, the underdog, had a point to prove. I'm fair, but I'm firm. Coach him up. It's, it's Pacquiao. He's bad. From his right eye. Bad. Big time. And if that was off of Morales' left hook, or maybe a headbutt. An unintentional clash of heads in round five caused a cut above Manny's eye affecting the latter half of the fight. Controlling the pace of the battle throughout and with a favorable scorecard entering the 12th, Morales switches to southpaw, stubbornly mimicking Manny's tactics. He switches southpaw, lands a couple of right hands, puts himself in harm's way though against Pacquiao's left hand. Yeah, yeah that's a big one. I don't know why he would fight Pacquiao. Why in the world would he switch southpaw? For the winner by unanimous decision, De la zona norte, Tijuana, Mexico. Going the distance, Morales is unanimously crowned victor in a fight voted the second best of the year. His third career loss 
sowed the seed of what is widely considered one of the greatest boxing trilogies of all time. November 18th, 2006. The final showdown between the Titans, billed as the grand finale, saw a dominant display. Round one begins. Will it be a boxing match? Will it be a brawl? Will it be a little of both? Pacquiao quickly made Morales backtrack on comments made following the previous fight. Now, he was feeling the punches. Done Morales. Pacquiao's all over it. Morales slightly staggered after that last left hand. And down he goes. Solid left hand shot by Pacquiao. His flurry of powerful combinations put the Mexican fighter on the canvas three times, ending the spectacle in the third round leaving Morales to question his retirement. Without the explosive trilogy, the career of one of boxing's all-time greats may never have come to fruition. May 2007. At 28 years old, few Filipinos were held in higher esteem than the Pac-Man. Not only was he an international success and face of the country, but he also symbolized hope to millions. Hope that they could one day make it out of the hardship he had once endured. Though he still continued to throw punches in the ring, his next fight was in the elections. A celebrity in his own right, Manny faced an uphill battle in convincing the electorate to vote for someone with little to no education or experience in politics. Pacquiao was defeated in the election by the incumbent representative from the Nationalist People's Coalition, hinting that the people weren't prepared to lose him as their boxing icon. June 20th, 2008. Continuing his legacy of rising through divisions, the one-time flyweight world champion was now standing toe-to-toe -to -toe for the WBC lightweight world championship, jumping through seven weight divisions to eventually fight David Diaz. Taking place on the strip, the bloody ninth round stoppage sealed Pacquiao's status as the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, taking the crown from the recently retired Floyd Mayweather. Faster and stronger than Diaz throughout, his three and four punch combinations stamped his name in the record books, becoming the only Asian boxer in history to hold five world titles in five weight classes. With the ring and WBC super featherweight titles, as well as the latter's lightweight version in his possession, Pacquiao decided to vacate his super featherweight titles. Fixating on a showdown with 2005's fighter of the year, Ricky Hatton. Me and Manny, you know, we're, 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 we're sitting there and we fight, and um, not only, you know, you got like probably the best like welterweight in the world against the best pound for pound fighter in the world. We both, you know, none of us are ever in a dull fight. I don't think I've seen Manny Pacquiao in a, in a boring fight. He's an absolute, I mean, if I wasn't, if I wasn't fighting Manny Pacquiao, I think I'd be a fan of him, you know, because he's always in outstanding fights. But, you know, you become a great fighter by fighting great champions and they don't come much greater than Manny Pacquiao. You know, when you think it's an incredible achievement, that he won, was it his first world title at light flyweight, you know, uh, or flyweight? You know, to, to, to beat Oscar De La Hoya up at welterweight, I was, that's nothing short of phenom phenomenal, to be honest with you. It's a, an absolutely outstanding achievement. This is a big uh, fight, actually, and everybody's anticipating this big fight, especially Filipinos, because, uh, you know, Manny Pacquiao is a big hero in the Philippines, and uh, all his fights are being followed very closely by all Filipinos, and it actually it's a... Uh, He's considered one of those uh, very popular, influential uh, persons in the Philippines and that uh, he has 
you know, uh, high-placed uh, friends in government and uh, in other, uh, you know, uh, cross-sections of our society. So uh, we're very excited about this next fight because we seem to, uh, to know that they have the same common style of fighting, you know, the slugger, uh, the slugger type of uh, fighting. So, so I think uh, this will be very interesting. When there's a fight of Manny Pacquiao, everybody watches, you know, and uh, even uh, the cabinet secretaries, actually there's a zero crime rate all over the place and there's a standstill all over, no traffic. So it's really very nice uh, time when you have a fight like that, especially when there are so many problems in our government, especially many problems all over the world. And uh, they look forward to seeing this fight of Manny Pacquiao and especially against this guy who is also very popular here in the UK, also a sports hero here. I uh, would like to thanks to, uh, to all of you, to all your support, and I hope this coming May too, you're going to watch the fight, this is a once, once in a lifetime great fight you, you, you ever seen in, in boxing history. March 2009, the United Kingdom. The battle between East and West. Good morning, Mr. Aram. Good morning, Mr. Schaefer. Rival promoters. But they look like friends. Oh, we're partners, are Exactly. <laughs> Manny Pacquiao having lots of fun. <laughs> okay. So where are you from, Manny? So, from Scotland. Scotland, our hero okay. is William. William Wallace. <laughs> William <laughs> Wallace. <laughs> Wallace. Uh, from Scotland. We're fighting for freedom against the English. <laughs> <laughs> Darts, Manny. Are you practicing darts then? Yeah. You won't be able to wear that shoe, mate. Take the jacket off. I'm not good at darts. Good morning, Manny. When Freddie says this and Freddie says that, when I see him sliding with someone like a me, who's probably about four inches taller, we'll be backing away from Manny, left, right and centre, do you know what I mean? I, I don't, you know, the fact that, he, that, that Freddie wants him sparring by me makes me, it put, puts confidence in me, because I think, because I don't see, personally, I don't see the logic to it, you know? So when Freddie says he thinks Manny will beat the three rounds, surely to not, he's gonna, he's not gonna come. I hope he does. No, I think he might come for me for about 30 seconds. I generally do believe that. And if he does come for me, obviously there's plenty of dangers there for me. I've got to be on my toes, I've got to keep my chin down, and I've got to, because he can hit, and he does put the punches together fast and well. But, please God, I hope he comes for me. April 7th, the Wild Card Boxing Club, Los Angeles.
Around the perimeter of the wildcard gym, all these people have gathered to get the autograph and photograph signed of Manny Pacquiao, the Pac-Man. They've all come to see Manny Pacquiao right under the stairs here, all the way around to these guys here who turned up about five hours ago. I'm ready to the fight on Saturday. I know Ricky Hatton is trained hard for this fight. He's a good person, nice guy. There's nothing personal for this fight. A boxer can't reach any higher pinnacle, can he? Winning a world title is one thing, but pound for pound means you're regarded the best fighter in all weight divisions. You're the best fighter breathing, I suppose, so that's what's on the line. May 2nd, 2009, Las Vegas. In front of a sellout crowd at the MGM Grand, the majority of which supported Hatton, the five-weight champion ferociously assaulted Hatton from the sound of the bell, flooring the Brit not once, but twice in the first round. Manny breached Hatton's defense in the second with a flurry of vicious combinations. After connecting only 18 from 78 thrown, a brutal left hand rendered Hatton unconscious before hitting the floor. In hindsight, labeling the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter as a one-dimensional boxer could have been better placed. Pacquiao's speedy demolition profoundly affected Hatton, ultimately forcing him to retire and even contemplate suicide. In pursuit of more records, Pacquiao set his sight on the WBO welterweight championship held by Cotto. Both camps agreed to fight two pounds underweight to accommodate Pacquiao's more petite physique. The bout went deep into the 12th round, with Pacquiao delivering Cotto's only defeat of his career with a TKO 55 seconds into round 12 sending a boxer to hospital for the second time in two fights. There is no limit, it seems, to what this man can do. When you beat Marquez, are you going to call out Manny Pacquiao? That's the one all the fans want to see. Well, I don't, you know, all, all roads, all roads leads to Floyd Mayweather. You know, I'm not chasing no opponent. If, if that fight presents itself next, then we'll make it happen. We don't complain, we don't say nothing. All we do is work, all we do is work. Yeah. Negotiations waver, as questions surrounding how and when they would be drug tested led Mayweather to take a couple more years out of the sport. November 21st, 2009. An announcement by Pacquiao confirmed his intent to once again run for a congressional seat in the Philippine House of Representatives. I'm confident like boxing. <laughs> in 2010, after months of campaigning across his wife's home district of Sarangani, Pacquiao dethroned the wealthy and politically well-entrenched Chiong Biang clan that had been in power in the province for more than 30 years. He garnered 120,000 votes to his opponent's 60,000, 
a landslide victory for someone with no political experience. Alongside Angelina Jolie, Tiger Woods, and Kobe Bryant, in 2009, down to his influence in the Philippines, Manny was named in Times and Forbes' top 100 celebrity lists. Manny shifted his focus to the political ring, where just like in boxing, he had trained hard, completing a course in development, legislation, and governance. Shortly after being elected as a congressman, he delivered a speech in which he argued that the country must do more to organize and fund the efforts of anti-trafficking agencies. Immediately, he began working with the Vision Forum, the country's largest anti-trafficking charity. Lured from their homes with promises of job stability and wealth, Manny received praise for highlighting the plight faced by vulnerable victims trafficked into the Manila sex bars and overseas as far as Syria and Japan. For them, Manny's fight would last far beyond that of the ring. On February 13, 2013, Philippines President Benigno Aquino III signed the anti-trafficking bill Pacquiao had been championing into law. But the larger-than-life Filipino personality was never far from controversy. Religion was an essential pillar of his beliefs and policies. Raised as a Catholic, but practicing as an evangelical Protestant, his views on the contentious reproductive health bill sparked criticism. Manny Pacquiao is pro-life. Manny Pacquiao is votes no to House Bill number 4244. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Maraming salamat ang kampiyon po natin. Standing alone as the only acceptable champion in history, Manny returned to the States and laced the gloves again. This time for the vacant WBC super welterweight title versus Margarito. Entering the ring 17 pounds lighter than his opponent gave Pacquiao the upper hand on speed and combination. Yeah, Margarito's saying that Pacquiao's not hurting him, but his face is telling a different story. Indeed. And Pacquiao's beginning to land with almost every punch. In the penultimate round, the damage delivered to Margarito made Manny question the referee's decision to continue the fight. Garcia may stop the I'm fight okay. here. I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. How are you? Tell me how are you, bastard. I'm okay. Backing off in the last round, Pacquiao later admitted that boxing wasn't for killing. After skipping his post-fight interview, Margarito was sent directly to hospital to undergo surgery for a fractured orbital bone. The damage would be permanent, almost losing him his license to box. The victory continued his untouched legacy of becoming an eight-time world champion in eight different weight classes, a feat that would likely never be matched. Not intending to fight for the retainment of that belt, Manny moved back down a weight class, but with pressure to focus on his career in Congress, questions surrounding his retirement resurfaced. My mom, she doesn't want me to fight anymore, so we will uh, talk about that with my family. Further negotiation attempts to set up the fight that would definitively decide the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter of all time failed. June 9, 2012. Instead of Mayweather, it was Bradley that stood in his way. But controversy was never too far away from the Filipino boxer. In a display of what many analysts call a sign of corruption within the sport, the grueling 12 rounds, which ended with most of the ringside media scoring a Pacquiao victory, concluded with a wave of boos. Bradley had won, but by June 21st, the five WBO championship committee judges on the review panel declared that Pacquiao should have been the rightful victor. Unable to change the outcome, both fighters would meet again. 
Both victories went the way of the unstoppable Filipino. Two thousand thirteen saw the election of the sixteenth Congress of the Philippines. Manny ran unopposed, securing a second stint representing the people. Now, killing with kindness, he gave much back to the Filipino community. Known as the people's champ for his generosity throughout his career, he's gifted almost half of the income from all of his fight purses and endorsements. According to Forbes, that number rests at $500 million. Projects ranged from the construction of 1,500 homes on the island of Mindano to the purchase and gifting of a new fleet of boats for fishermen in coastal communities. Though not a god, he remains worshipped by millions for his philanthropic ventures, using his platform to benefit not only himself, but to serve others. In 2014, he only attended Congress four times as his priorities shifted back to training for two more fights that year. For Manny, entering the ring provided an easier avenue for change. With an impressive record of 57 wins, five losses, and two draws, little was left to conquer. Since 2010, negotiations for a super fight that would define the greatest pound-for-pound -pound fighter have crumbled. Never have two fighters who've never shared the ring together been so intertwined. Spawning from an unlikely source, serious negotiations between the two icons rekindled in mid-2014. Craig's Restaurant, West Hollywood. An unlikely friendship blossomed from their love of boxing. Hollywood actor Gabriel Salvador, working as a waiter, bonded with the president of Showtime's parent company, Leslie Moonves. Believing he could cut through the politics which led to the failed negotiations of the past, he initiated a meeting between Les Moonves and Roach. Manny's confidant and owner of the boxing gym Salvador's son trained at. Roach agreed to the interview, setting the wheels in motion for one of the most anticipated fights in boxing history. I think he's scared. I, I really don't want, I, I don't think he wants this fight. I think that like CBS and Showtime was losing so much money in his previous fights that they forced him into this fight. I don't think he wants to fight this fight. I think he was forced to fight Pacquiao because I mean, you know, big companies like that don't like to lose money. For the first time since 2002, both HBO and Showtime came together to collaborate on the production. In the Philippines, plans were in place to broadcast it across three of the country's major broadcast television networks. On February 20th, Mayweather announced that the fight was official and a contract had been signed for a fight to take place on May 2nd, 2015. Destination, Las Vegas. One of the biggest fight in my career and uh, I think uh, a historic fight. April 27th, 2015. In the lead up to the spectacle, Manny's mind was elsewhere as he aimed to use his platform to fight for a fellow Filipino incarcerated on Indonesia's death row. Until the Philippine Embassy receives the notice of execution, only then will the 72-hour countdowns commence. Filing of judicial review will push through on Monday. Manny Pacquiao, on behalf of my countryman, Mary Jane Veloso, and the entire Filipino people, I am making a 
Commission kind of are that the NHLNC will grant executive clemency to her by sparing her life and severing her from execution. That's top rank. Top rank, yes. Top rank, yes. Top rank just did. Back it up, please. Back it up, please. Everything that I have accomplished is God who gave me the strength. I just, I just want to, to be an example and inspiration to everybody how my life before, uh, before I became a, bo a boxer. I used to sleep in the street, starving, hungry, and now I cannot imagine that the Lord raised me in this position. The broadcast in the Philippines was being watched by nearly half of the country's households. In stark contrast to the Vegas Strip, the usually bustling streets of Manila halt. When Manny fights, it's an unofficial national holiday. Even crime diminishes. Two of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in history took to the canvas with the eyes of the world fixated on them. Both fighters came out aggressively, with the first three rounds going the way of the American, as he escaped Pacquiao's attempts to push him up against the ropes. The pressure exhibited in round four pushed Pacquiao's body back to breaking point, aggravating a shoulder injury he received just a month prior. From that point on, the Pac-Man was ineffective. Athletes always fight uh, hurt. Uh, we felt the uh, work that was done on the shoulder during training would give him the opportunity to use the right hand. The thing is, um, uh, on the third round, I already, um, you know, feel the the pain in my, in my shoulder, so that's why uh, when, when I throw a lot of punches combination, and if you imagine I uh, back off because, um, because um, it's hurt. The injury was partially healed, but Pacquiao requested and was denied an injection of legal painkillers before the fight. Though continuing to dispute the results, maintaining he should have been the victor by two points after 12 rounds, Pacquiao suffered defeat by a unanimous decision. The bout made sporting history, with Pacquiao becoming the second highest paid athlete in the world in 2015. The man that once struggled to survive on the streets had generated $1.2 billion in revenue from his 25 pay-per-view bouts. Recovering from surgery to repair a torn rotator cuff following his defeat to Mayweather, Manny vowed to return to the ring. My physical condition now is uh, good, 100%. Uh, my, my shoulder is well and it's healed already. And, and, and I'm excited to uh, go back to America and uh, uh, you know, finish my training there. This has always excited me. It sees Senator Manny Pacquiao defend his world title because he's he's like that. He loves that. He loves he loves stuff like that. In his role as legislator in the House of Representatives, he was less effective in administering change 
as none of the bills he'd filed passed through the committee. But his failings didn't diminish his ambition to become a senator. My goal is uh, to give, uh, to serve the people honestly and to, to expose all the wickedness and uh, detestable things that in God's sight that most of the politicians do. Under the United Nationalist Alliance, the party of Vice President Benet, Pacquiao announced his intention to continue his career in Filipino politics, running for senator. Growing up in the Philippines, his mother raised him Catholic. But the trappings for a young man in Manila became too tempting. Drifting into gambling and dabbling in drugs and alcohol plunged Manny into a period of sin during his earlier years as a professional boxer. I have a um, lot of uh, friends, but uh, they they encouraged me to, to try these drugs, and then I had, uh, I tried it, and then uh, when I realized I was young, I was um, like 15, 15, 16, but uh, when I realized it's not good and I don't like it, um, then uh, that's why I, I strongly uh, oppose and fight these uh, illegal drugs. Uh, the problem in our country is um, beyond of our expectation, beyond of our imagination that the drugs, these uh, this illegal drugs in our country is um, really, really bad. And a lot of uh, government officials, elected officials are involved with this uh, uh, illegal drug. With age came transformation, both ideologically and physically. After a visitation in his dream by two angels, Pacquiao altered his perspective on life, vowing to be a born-again evangelical Protestant. His biblical teachings permeated into every aspect of his life and politics. He was a more faithful spouse, but received heavy criticism for holding the biblical definition of homosexuality. What did I wrong is um, just comparing the the people to animals. But you know what I'm telling is the truth. I mean, uh, I'm just telling what the Bible says. May 19th, 2016. Having received the backing of over 16 million votes, Pacquiao was formally elected as a senator of the Philippines, coming in seventh place. A crucial step for any politician on their journey to potentially becoming president. At 37 years old, Pacquiao wasn't finished throwing punches, both in the ring and politically. Even though he'd announced his retirement in 2015, word spread of a possible comeback bout, if it didn't infringe on his work in the Senate. I'm already retired, so I might come back, but I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm going to fight, but I'm, I just want to make sure na hindi maapektuhan yun. Um, my work in Senate will not be affected if, um, <clears throat> if I'm going to come back. If I come back to, to fight again, I'm, I just want to make sure na, uh, that um, in times of uh, vacation in, 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 in Senate like that, I grew up in box, unboxing and boxing is my passion, so, but <clears throat> uh, time comes right now. My priority is uh, my, my work. I'm not saying that, you know, um, I'm not saying that 
boxing is close to me, but you know, we never know. But it's already uh, I made my decision uh, to retire. I didn't feel uh, different um, compared um, when I was um, 27, 25, like that. Um, I'm still the same uh, because I, I have, uh, uh, you know, I discipline myself. Even if I don't have a fight, I don't. I am not in training. I always exercise every day, so playing basketball. I'm confident to um, win the fight. God is good. Um, but uh, I don't want to take him lightly. I just want to make sure that I'm 100% condition for this uh, training. Um, I just want to make sure that I'm 100% uh, physically, mentally, and uh, spiritually. It's going okay. I mean, no different than before. He used to be either singing, dancing, or making movies. So, I mean, he always likes a full plate, and Manny responds well of that. He had a great day a couple of days ago. He's a little flat today, but you, know, you have those days. There's, there's, there's up and down like that, but then once we get, as we get closer to the fight, we'll get more control of My time is not done yet. Uh, that's what I'm trying to uh, to prove this coming July 15 that Manny Pacquiao is that is not done yet in boxing.
The views he was elected on aligned with that of the controversial President Duterte and his government. As of 2018, Pacquiao has filed a total of 31 Senate bills during the 17th Congress, and in a contentious bill filing, he backed the return of the death penalty. I am aware that we still have a long way to go in our fight against this social menace. Let the reason why I advocate the imposition of the death penalty for crimes related to illegal drugs. I mean, it's nothing personal to, um, you know, uh, to us the dilemma in the Committee on Justice. I'm just doing my job uh, to, to correct everything, uh, to follow the rules and uh, regulation in the Senate. The Philippine drug war intensified under the presidency of Duterte pledging to eradicate all illegal drugs, going as far as urging the public to kill addicts. The drug lords, drug posers, they alarm, and then uh, they, of course, they have to, I mean, I'm sure they have to kill their people, not to, <laughs> to expose them at the public, in the public, so that's what happened, but it's unfair for that to the president that all the killings, all the uh, crimes charged to the president. My, my focus is to, uh, uh, to, change, uh, and, um, to change our country and help the president, the advocacy, because um, the president and I were uh, very close, so <clears throat> we're joined together and then uh, uh, clean these uh, illegal drugs in our country. Although he'd admitted to sampling prohibited substances in his youth, many of Pacquiao's fans were left disappointed by the boxing icon's stance. We respect our president, we honor our president because uh, the only president who uh, fight um, and hit on the, these um, illegal drugs, this is our uh, opportunity to uh, bring it back the uh, harmony and uh, peace in our country. Including 54 children in the first year, news organizations and human rights groups claimed the war on drugs led to the deaths of over 12,000 Filipinos. Waning in the twilight of his career, Manny won only four of his last six professional bouts during his stint as senator, ending his career with a record of 62 wins, eight losses, and two draws. Boxing is my passion. Um, it's really um, hard to uh, you know, to stop and turn, hang up the gloves you know, when you are, you, when you, when you know that you can still fight. I want to, to have people around so I can, I'm motivated. Um, it gives me more motivation and uh, determination to work hard and to focus. Amidst the political backlash, he continued his philanthropic ventures. As the COVID pandemic gripped the world, Pacquiao and Chinese billionaire Jack Ma helped to provide the Philippines with over 50,000 test kits. As the end of Duterte's presidency neared, speculation of a potential successor quickly spread. Are you going to run for the presidency? It might be. Um, I, I'll, whatever my decision, uh, in the right time, I will announce it. Pacquiao had spent the last decade and a half of his career learning government protocol and serving the people. If God will put me there, uh, although I'm not declaring yet, I'm not, uh, I don't have a final decision yet, but if that my destiny to become a president, uh, first thing to do that I'm going to work out uh, of my job is to build a uh, mega prison. Uh, which is um, preparing for those uh, because I'm going to declare war against corruption. So I, I want that. That's my, my only dream is to to see them in the jail, all the uh, corrupt politicians.
The People's Champ threw his hat in the ring on September 19th, 2021. I, I am thinking about uh, backing out like that of my plan. Uh, this is for the Filipino people. What I'm doing now is to, for the benefits and for a uh, true change, real change. I never, um, in my dreams, that I wanted to be president. But it just uh, seeing the desperation of uh, our people uh, made me realize everything that I need to, because uh, nobody will fight for them. Uh, sincerely, wholeheartedly, and that's Manny Pacquiao. Um, we can we can push the drug war uh, without <clears throat> with the due process. I mean, there's a law. Uh, you have to respect the due process. Give them chance to defend themselves and to prove that they're innocent. Do you think that putting you know, drug users in jail is the right thing to do, is the best way to deal with that issue? Because it could have been you. Yes, yeah, so we we, uh, we have to put to jail in uh, those who are using drugs, um, selling drugs. That's uh, what the, the law says. I mean, it, drugs uh, in the Philippines is not, it's not legal. It's illegal. So, but we're not going to uh, to kill them in, without due process like that in the street. Should you have gone to jail? Because you said you, you have used drugs before. No, that was uh, when I was younger. I mean, when I was younger. I mean, I mean, uh, if you're caught like that, uh, if you're caught in... People can change. That's what I'm talking about, you know what I mean? If you change your life, and then... Uh, I mean, if you change your life and follow the law, then... Before I'm naive, that's why I, 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 I use drug. I don't know the law. But if you know the law, I don't think people, do, um, they don't know the law. That's what I'm talking about. People, they know already that the law is uh, not allowing the illegal drugs. So we should obey the law. So you're saying when you took drugs, you didn't know that it was against the law? Yes, I, I'm young. I don't know the, the, the law. Oh, how young were you? Oh, before uh, 18. Standing on a platform of eliminating corruption, health care reform, and a promise of nationwide housing projects for the poor centering his campaign on the impoverished in society. He struggled to gain traction amongst the voters and found himself combative against statements that he is not intelligent enough to lead a government, saying himself that those who vote for corrupt officials are even more feeble-minded. Pacquiao's efforts to lead his fellow countrymen landed him in third place, receiving only 6.18% of the vote. Having failed in his bid for the presidency, he continues to give back to the community. Whatever your views are on politics or religion, Manny has stood powerfully for the powerless, providing a platform and support to those in need, displaying the conviction that better times will come and then better conditions. Few sporting legacies in any sport revolve around their exploits outside of the field of play. Manny Pacquiao's legacy will forever be remembered for the change accomplished inside and outside the ring. I miss boxing, but uh, 
I don't, I don't think boxing is still like me. <laughs> well, I, I'm already 40, turning 43 years old, so it's uh, enough for me. I mean, I'm done. Hanging, hanging the, my gloves is, uh, is the hardest part of my, of my life. Because I grew up in boxing, so but I understand that uh, this is sport.